Uh, I've just come back from the IFP annual conference, uh, October 2013. Uh, the reason I uh, went there is because it's key people within the profession who all gather together to share ideas. You can get access to key people who you wouldn't be able to otherwise. You've got things like secretaries to get through, you've got their diary to uh, compete with, and uh, I'm just not going there. So the easiest way is to jump into the event and then you've just got the pond full of all the fish that you want to go and meet and see. Sean Weaver, he's a professional speaker and was engaging us with um, referrals and networking ideas. Uh, but one of the key things for him was that he's given me courage and a path to actually look at professional speaking and take that going forward and share my story and share my message. So that's something I really want to do. I shared a story with a lady called Abby Tanner and she um, influenced me in as far as she was a client, not of the of financial services, but just in another personal experience in her life. And how frightening it can be when you go and see a professional expert who doesn't really know how to diagnose or communicate what it is that the problem is. You have a problem, you know you have a problem, you need an expert to tell you what that problem is. And how frightening that is when the expert can't actually specifically tell you what that problem is and says things like, well, let's just Google it, shall we? Right. So I wonder how many of us in our profession and in what we're doing in our lives are behaving in similar ways and just causing really frightening experiences for people. Um, another person was Philippa Han and the importance of making um, file notes and records of each and every encounter with a client, not just meetings but telephone conversations um, and be very specific about what was discussed and what was said, not generic because there's no proof then and how important the uh, court system, if that's where uh, record keeping ends up, how important that is. Another message from Jason uh, Butler about team and allowing people into your business. Um, don't let the maggots in. Um, have a, a much longer recruitment and interview process. And if people don't like that, then they're probably likely to be a maggot, so don't let them in. Clients' perception is everything. The encounters that they have with us as professional people gives them their first impressions and they are absolutely vital and really important. Everything we do, everything counts. No one job is less important than the next in the business that we do. Uh, from answering the phone, the, tele uh, the door, recording a, a telephone message, every single job that we do is vitally important. And the reason for this is that sadly, the consumer's perspective of a financial advisor is Del Boy and we really have to move away from that if we want to be seen as professional people. The key thing I'm taking forward is to continue maintaining excellence within the business, maintaining professional standards and maintaining the professionalism in how we behave and encounter with clients and I'm looking for my number two financial advisor to learn and grow with me and with the business and with the team and that's my next person coming into the business. Um, as a conductor of an orchestra, I have a drummer, I have a violinist, I have a cellist, I have a piano player, I'm looking for somebody who can play the flute and so and to find somebody is going to be young, professional, and somebody I can um, teach in a way that the business uh, behaves. So it's going to be from a graduate, it's going to be from a university, and I'm really hoping to build bridges with Manchester University um, and find somebody from, from that network of people to, uh, to bring into the business. Now, Bill Backright, uh, another really just wonderful speaker, wonderful messages. Um, he said, we just have to stop talking crap, 
stop being hypocrites. So, for example, I've got a hairdresser, as you know, and I look at her hair. If she looks after her hair, she looks after her hair so she can do mine. I allow her to do mine. I go to the dentist, I look after my teeth, I look at his teeth. Yeah, he looks after his teeth, his wife works in his practice as well. She looks after her teeth, she's older than me, she's had braces for four years to straighten her teeth. She's gone through the mill and he's done it all. All the, all the team in there, the receptionist, they are having work done. I said I was having a crown earlier this year. They, knew, they know all about a crown. Not in the way that he does, but in enough way to give you um, confidence that you're okay, you're in good hands. How many people in your team, how many people as financial advisors have got a financial plan? can actually put their hand up and say, yes, I've got one, or I go and see someone else to have my plan reviewed and updated and have a conversation with somebody about where I'm going. How many of us can say that? So if you can't, then you've got a little voice in the back of your head saying, no, you haven't got one. So a client asks you, have you got one? Yes, I have. No, you haven't. And the little voice tells you, no, you haven't. If that's the case. So... Great message, great message. Um, the chap Derek Mills, um, he spoke yesterday and was talking about the transformation in his life where he was running around everywhere, driving here, there and everywhere for top up premium, for a bit of administration, for a bit of support to a client. Can you this, can you that? Yes, he'd go early in the morning, late in the evening, weekends, just running ragged didn't have a life, he couldn't pay his bills, um, and just stopped and started to raise his standards and just started to put some look after him, take his, um, you know, look after himself physically, his, his body, his mind, and just put standards in place. And he said, and as soon as he started doing that, the world saw him differently and then started to pitch up with him and different people were attracted and he's just transformed his business. Transformed, it's not even his business, it's him. He is authentic, he is him. So he was talking about dancing your own dance. Don't worry about how other people dance and what they can do, dance your own dance. Bill Backright was a run your own race. Be you, be authentic, people want you. They don't want a phony, they don't want somebody who is trying to be someone else. They want a genuine person. We've got to be ourselves. What's important, not what other people have perhaps tried to educate us with or give us templates of stuff. What makes us happy? What, what, what's acceptable in terms of physical exercise, arriving early for meetings, how much time you give to various people, what you say, the words you exchange. You define those, no one else. Really powerful.